job in email or however you're sending it off. And on the other end, you just base 64 decode it, you get an AMR file, and you can play yourself the audio. Um, we do that by creating the player using the capture colon slash slash audio function to manager dot create player. And then we set up a, re a record control and an object to hold the recorded data, and then just start the recording. Close it, com uh, commit it, finalize it, and send it off the device. So now we're going to move into listeners a little bit. The location listener is a really cool one. Um, we create a listener that implements the particular interface where. So to do, to do the listeners, it's slightly different. You create a class that implements the interface that we're interested in. Um, so for location listener, we create a class that implements the location listener interface. And then we get an instance of, of the location provider class and the location listener uh, with the first parameter of our custom class. So what that does is it actually uses our class and calls the events through our class prior to passing the events through to the normal, normal location. So in this particular case, every time an event uh, uh, update is the one I trap, every time a, a GPS update event is fired, our class is called and our particular method is called so that we can then trap that in real time. And you'll see the LL there is, is a new instance of the local listener and then the LP. And the ones, um, I forget what they all stand for, but one of them is every second it's going to fire a location event and pass it off to my code. Um, so here we have the SMS outbound listener. Creates a class that implements, again, the send listener interface. We add the send listener. <clears throat> and then once the send listener is added, every time that the specific events that we're interested in, in this case, the outbound SMS occurs, we can trap that and send it to the exfiltration method. Uh, the PIM listener is just like the other listeners. Again, this time we trap item added, item removed, and item updated methods um, by implementing the PIM listener interface in a custom class. And we trap all of those and exfiltrate the updated, added, or deleted data so that you can see that in real time. So now we move into exfiltrators quick. And I'm no, I know I'm hauling here but because I have a 13-minute a, a demo video, and I want to make sure that we can at least see this stuff in action at the end. Um, so exfiltration-wise, we have a number of different methods. Uh, this one is the uh, SMS datagram method, which, by the way, if you have a lot of contacts, you don't want to use this. I learned that the hard way when I sent 600 SMS messages off my phone because I dumped my entire contact database by mistake, but I'm not sure my employer is happy to find that bill. Um, so the first step in SMS datagram uh, is to open a connector to the SMS, and you see here the uh, PNUM and then port, this.pnum is configurable uh, from, from the uh, command and control, so you can set it to whatever PNUM you want. I could have made the port configurable as well, I chose not to. And then we create a new datagram and convert the message that we got in uh, from, from, the, from the listener or from the individual dumper, convert the message we wish to send into a byte buffer, and we send the data into the datagram, pack the datagram, and jam it out, jam it out the wire um, with, the, with the send method. We also have HTTP get post. Um, and this is a second example of an exfiltrator that was built into the code. The get model uses the connector method that we saw before. It uses a string of HTTP uh, colon, colon, colon slash slash URL slash message. Uh, the URL itself is, again, configurable, so we can say we want to pass the data to a domain that we own, and then we append the message as a slash message at the end of that get request. And all we have to do is look at the logs, capture the data, parse it out, and drop it back into whatever we want. Post method is similar. That's on the bottom half here. I actually exfiltrate it in two spots in this example. Um, you'll see the second line, I'm, I'm actually setting the data to be the user agent. Um, so just as, as, a, as a secondary example of how you could do it. They could do the same thing in the gets, but I, I did it in the post there. And then down at the bottom, you see the OS write, where I'm jamming the message bytes into um, the output stream and sending it out, uh, out, out the uh, HTTP post data. So conceptually similar, but slightly different uh, programmatically. Um, all of the listeners are threaded-based exfiltration, so I spawn a, I spawn a thread for, for those. Um, by this, I mean whenever a listener exfiltration is attempted, we spawn a new thread. So the operating system and event queues don't bog down. Waiting for responses, again, that 600 SMS message thing I did by mistake told me I had to thread those listeners because it just bogged the crap out of my BlackBerry when I was doing debugging but allows us to queue the messages outbound if the network is slow. Um, so to, to do the threaded exfiltration, um, I extended the thread class and created a custom threaded send class, I called it, 
and then use the run method within the threaded send class to call the exfiltration function, which actually sends the data outbound. So I just wrapped it in a thread, essentially. So there's the commands. Command and control um, is locked to inbound SMS, as I mentioned. We, uh, we initialize a listener at application startup um, to listen for any inbound SMS messages, and if you've set the when you compile it, if you set it to be a system module and a auto run module, it'll happen after reboot automatically so you don't have to worry about getting the user to actually rerun it each time. Which, by the way, is blocked in 5.0. Um, so you can't, you can't set it as, I believe it's you can't set it as a system module in 5.0. But whatever the case may be, um, 5.0 has limited some of that functionality. Um, so essentially the way the command control works is if the inbound message doesn't match any of our commands, we pass the message through to the inbox, the SMS inbox cleanly. If it does match our commands, we execute our, our individual command in a big case statement. Uh, I mentioned I did not drop the, the code, I did not drop the inbound commands, I left them noisy intentionally, but it should be easy for you guys to figure out how to either move it to like email or move it to TCP or something to that effect. Um, so those are the commands. They all stand for something like PHLON is uh, everything. TXS is my initials, first of all. I should probably tell you that. Um, PH would, be, would stand for phone listener on. PHL off would be phone listener off. PIM on is the, the information manager on and off, the listener for it. Uh, SLIN on is the SMS listener inbound on. Um, so the rest are pretty, pretty logical. The commands make sense and should be pretty straightforward. The no authentication on this code. So if you infect a phone and somebody else figures out that it's infected, they'll be able to do the same things you will. So keep that in mind if you start playing with the code. Methods of detection and future work. Um, this, is, this is kind of the, the point of this, uh, of this talk, is where do we go from here? So I've created this proof of concept code uh, so people can understand that this stuff is possible and is already being done in, in many, many places. Um, but how do we, where do we go from here? How do we make this better across the board? Um, first of all, additional operating system prompts would be great. I know there'll be backlash. I know RIM would, would not necessarily think that's the best thing in the world to do, but remove the trusted application prompt and just make everything prompt by default so that when you run an application for the first time, it prompts up a box and says, this application is attempting to access your contact database. Do you want it to? And then it's, then it's on the end user. Now, you guys can do that yourselves, but it would be kind of neat if RIM put it that way for across the board. Um, you know, generally, we're, we're still using signature-based, and, and that, that solution's just not gonna work. That's how the current antivirus world is failing, um, so we don't wanna worry about signature-based. Sandbox-based execution still requires you to execute it in a sandbox, and you can't ever ensure that the execution executes everything within the binary, so you can't be entirely sure that you've executed full functionality of the application. So that's not gonna be work well as a detection method either. The most effective detection method would be static decompilation and analysis, which is difficult from an automated perspective. But in, conceptually, the idea is there is we decompile the application, which should be straightforward given that it's Java wrapped, wrapped with their proprietary code format. So if we can reverse engineer the code format, get the Java jatted out, we should be able to manually inspect what, what each application does. But enumerate the sources of sensitive data. Whenever uh, one of the applications that you've downloaded is touching data on your phone, get a list of that. Then we enumerate all of the exfiltration syncs. We look at all the ways that a, a binary can send data outbound. So if the binary is calling an HTTP outbound socket, we enumerate those for that particular binary we're looking at. And then we, we map the control and data flow for tracing and sensitive taint, uh, sensitive taint tracking between source and sync that we've just defined. And if we compare those findings, we say, okay, this binary, looks at contacts, oh, and it, we trace it through, oh, and it sends that data out via um, SMS. Okay, it potentially could send that data out via SMS. We need to know, okay, is that an accepted source of data exfiltration for this style of application? Is that something that the application is intended to do? And raise red flags when that is not the case, and, and question why, why that's the case. So again, you really need to target the binary here. So future work, um, reverse engineer the code file format, as I mentioned. It's funny enough, I was researching online, looking if anybody had done this, and if anybody else knows about anybody who's done this, let me know. There was one guy who was spending some time reverse engineering the code file format, and he, he was on some forums, and he was posting some examples, and he got to the end of the food chain, he's like, I think I got it, and then poof, he disappeared. 
uh, never